Creative Music here. Uh, as you read by the uh, title of the video, we're going to talk about some charts. Now, I got some charts off Instagram from various beat makers that shouldn't be making charts, mix engineers, and just, uh, you know, some of the charts are good. Some of these charts are not good. They're not good and they're not helping producers. They're not helping guys trying to learn how to mix. So um, we're going to address some of these. So let's, let's get right into it. If you like the content on the channel, subscribe. So here we go. Your frequency spectrum chart. This is a good chart. This chart's fine. Your sub frequencies, 20 to 65 hertz. Your base frequencies, I can't read that. Mids, 250, up to 2K. That's, uh, a great spot for vocal bumps upper mids 2k to 6k 6k to 10k for highs 10k to 20 hertz for air air I mean I get the air air is cool but with all that said it's not really gonna help you unless you know what goes where and even if it does, you have to use your ears. Because what you're EQing, maybe it doesn't even need EQ. Maybe it already has those frequencies. So this chart will get folded, okay? Let's, let's fold this chart. This thing, you've probably seen this one floating around. The compressor is like your mother. The threshold, blah, 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 the ratio. My mother is a freaking saint, so no, no. The compressor is not like your mother. The compressor is a compressor. And here we go. Everyone's saying why to compress, what to compress, what to put compression on. Here's two here. We'll start with this one. Three reasons for compression. Gluing sounds together. That's true. Making a volume more consistent. Also true. Taming wild peaks. That's also true. But it just says compression. It shows you these three compressors, but you really need to know when to do this sort of thing. So what does gluing sounds together mean? So you're often referring to a bus compressor, okay? So Let's add a bus compressor to this beat. So I'm in Ableton Live. We're gonna add this bus compressor. But wait, I don't know what to do with this bus compressor. Oh, here's another chart. Drum compression sheet. Okay. Whoa, 
whoa, whoa, whoa. They're telling me four to one to eight to one compression on a kick drum. And on a snare and on toms. But not as much on overheads. And then on the bus. Okay, bus. Between two to one to eight to one. That's really vague, okay? So when you turn this thing on, it's set to two to one ratio default. Often, that's enough. We'll send these guys to it. Okay? So it did get louder, but it got more present and more in your face also. But eight to one compression. With what? With a reduction between four and ten. It's crazy. You just ruined the sound. Attack five to ten milliseconds. So vague. Release. No. So if you're using a glue type compressor, this cheat sheet would have just fucked you. Look, I just deleted the plugin and it sounds better. So we throw this back on. Fast attack, two to one ratio, three to one ratio, four to one ratio is pretty good. I go to the four to one ratio. Then if you have this over sampler, crank that up, does stuff. Anyways. You can also throw your bass into that same thing. And when they say glue, you start to hear the beat feel more as one. But now there's a gigantic problem with this. See, we start adding all this compression to every other element it's gonna squish and not sound good again so another reason to go back to this chart to compress or not to compress where's our three reasons for compression chart a reason not to compress is because you're using samples We can pull this wave file up big enough for you to see it here. Samples don't have dynamic range. It's the same velocity almost every time, especially if you have your velocity locked. You see, they don't need to be compressed. EQ'd, sure. These don't have any EQ on them either, because I was waiting for a crazy EQ chart to, to pop up or something, but. Yeah. Vocal, a reason to not compress a vocal is sometimes it'll just sound awesome with nothing, especially for rock or acoustic stuff. Less is more.
a hip hop vocal, I say all bets are off. You can do whatever. If you see like a weekend vocal chain, if you search the weekend's producer doing his vocal chain, it's got a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff. So, vocal cheat sheets. One of the two guys copied each other, first of all. They just changed their like little emoji things. Yo, my biggest problem with this is the first thing says removing silence. Silence does not exist in your recording because it is silent and you cannot hear it. Therefore, please, guys, don't worry about removing silence. You, you can't. You can't. So this guy said removing silence and noise. So maybe you want to remove some noise. That's, that's okay. I get the removing of the noise. You could totally remove noise. Um, volume automation, then auto tune, then a subtractive EQ, then desing, then desing, depending on which chart you got, then compression, then another EQ, then reverb and delay. And I don't know if you're putting all of that on one thing, but no, man. Like, come on, what are we doing here? What? Uh, if you're using Auto-Tune or Melodyne, first off, I suggest putting it on the very first thing in the chain. And uh, do your vocal correction and then commit to it and then add some stuff after. A rock vocal, like a channel strip and a de and maybe a compressor, light compressor. But if you don't need a subtractive EQ, then then don't add one. If you don't need desing, don't add desing. You just some people's S's don't need desing. So if if you know, desing. You don't have to. There's no desing. Uh, reverb and delay. Yeah, that's cool if you're trying to go for a, a wicked sound. But I wouldn't put it on the thing. Put it in a group or a bus, and then blend it in. But yeah, the vocal mix cheat sheet uh, kind of makes my blood boil. We have to rip these. Ripsies. Ripped. Ripped. Sucked. Um. What else do we miss here? All right, we did the compressions. I'm not. This is. I. I would just never. No, I'll do a video doing acoustic drums and how much compression I would use and stuff. Uh, the other thing with com compression is what kind of compressor? Because a four to one compressor compression on, on an LA two way or an eleven seventy six is. Kind of more compression than if you're using an SSL channel strip plugin or a stock plugin. Like every compressor squeezes different. 
like mothers. Certain compressors you can get away with way more compression and it still sounds nice. And then certain people's voices, a compressor will bring the frequency out in their voice and it'll sound terrible and you'll go back to the, the vocal with nothing on it and it'll sound great because you had nice mic placement, you had a nice mic preamp and you got a great performance out of the singer so you're good. Uh, we got some mastering chain ones here. I'm not going to go too deep on these, but we're going to do some more of these charts. We'll keep charting charts. You know, if this helped at all, give me a subscribe. We're going to do lots more videos. Coming in hot from 416 SBA Studios. Yeah, like this mastering chain. got a fab filter then a Seradio tools standard clip gently touching the track catching bigger peaks then an isotope stereo imager <clears throat> then a fab filter compressor a multiband compressor then a slate effects leveler then an, a clipper to achieve his loudness. Oh no, sorry. <clears throat> the Fab Filter L2. Oh my. And then a BX meter in span. That is way too much shit, yo. No. Get a balanced mix that's exciting and popping. And the master needs like nothing. Watch like one Andrew Shep's video. Another one. Loud and punchy master. Create a parallel track or use an audio effect. Then use Ozone Maximizer. Lower the threshold as long as it doesn't audibly distort. I like that. That's one great tip. Mix in gently with the original copy. Okay, so he's uh, paralleling it. Repeat the process on the new output until it doesn't distort. I don't hate that, but it's a lot of shit. Um, It'd be worth trying out, I guess. Uh, but no, I wouldn't do it. But I mean, a great mix, a great balanced mix is going to take you so much further than worrying about the master. A lot of it is just making your tunes sound great with tunes that will be played around it. And there's really all you need to focus on so appreciate you tuning in and checking this out hit like and subscribe uh, send me some charts any charts you want me to take a look at send them to me uh, anything you want to add or disagree with drop it down there this is all music theory um, you know, a lot of things work for some guys that don't work for other guys. A lot of these charts are very old information, or they're not well thought out, or they might have worked once on one song. But, um, yo, these charts are getting out of hand, yo. Too many charts. More beat making, more song making, more bad mixes. I'd rather way more bad mixes because when you do a shitty mix, it's just going to make you do a better mix next time. So, yo.